All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a new e-bike on here, and this is from Frigo. It is the DK200 e-bike. This is a 1200 watt rear motor in the back. So that's similar to a Super 73 RX. Um, looking at this bike overall, when I first got it unboxed and everything and put it together, take a guess of what this looks like. To me, this looks like a mini bike, kind of like the Coleman bikes that you buy that have the gas motors like right in the middle of the frame, just because it kind of has that curve in the back of the frame. Um, but as you're looking at this frame, you're gonna see some stuff on it. Now, you do have a nice headlight in the front. Um, if you guys can see that, it is very nice. I rode it at night, it works so good. No problems with that. Nice cable management. Um, you have a big battery right here. This thing is a 20 amp hour battery and this is a 48 volt system. So you're gonna get some really good range out of that. I believe they claim it's about 25 to 40 miles, which is legit. That's not over compensating for anything. Like some companies say they do like 80 miles. That's not legit. 20 to 25 to 40 miles is pretty good on this. Um, the front suspension is great for bumps and stuff or going off road, but the bad thing is you can't adjust it. So that's not fun. Uh, one odd thing I thought about this bike was it has hydraulic brakes on this side, right? But you have mechanical brakes on this side, cable brakes. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Why not just put hydraulic brakes on both sides? But I started watching reviews of this video and I saw that most people were getting different setups. So like my wires, look at how my wires are. They're really, they're really short. I mean, they look kind of clean, but they're really pushing on these wires and they go straight in. While some of the other reviews that I've seen, they kind of come up, they're bunched up and they go straight down in the middle and they look a lot longer. And then also other reviews had hydraulic brakes on both sides. Um, they do mention it on their website that it only has one hydraulic brake on this side and a mechanical brake on this. But I'm thinking the earlier versions of this bike had different stuff on it and this is uh, one of the newer versions. So if you guys were to order one of these bikes right now, this is pretty much what the bike's gonna look like. Not a bad bike overall, if you ask me. Um, it looks pretty plain. As my girlfriend said when I showed it to her, she said it's just all black. There's nothing really fancy about it. And that is true, but some people like that. I don't mind it. I like all black bikes just because it blends in. You can kind of do your own type of mods to it, you know, and change what colors you want on your grips, pedals, whatever, fenders. Um, you can do whatever you want. But let's get a closer look at this bike and show you some of the stuff. So here is a closer look at the motor if you guys are curious to know what numbers and what model it is. So that's that. And then you're gonna have your fenders right here, which they are not metal, they are plastic, so they're not gonna rust or anything like that. And this does keep the bike a little bit lighter, so I don't mind that. You do have your rear light right here in the back, which I'm gonna turn on and see if it works as an actual brake light real quick. To turn the lights on on the bike, first the bike needs to be on, so you just hold this middle button, which is the M button, and then hold the up button, and then that will turn on your headlight and your brake light. Now your brake light's right here, I hit the brakes, it works with the left side. Now let's try it with the right side. Okay, so our brake works with both brake levers. So that is very nice to see that it actually works. Some bike companies don't even include a brake, but sometimes when they do include a brake, it doesn't actually function with the brake. So that is a pretty nice feature. If you can see right down in here, this has, I believe, a serial number for the battery and then the year that it was made, 08, 2022, and 17A, which I believe that's 17 amps. And since we have the lights on, here is a look at the headlight. I'll close my garage so you guys can get a better look at this. No lights in here whatsoever, other than this little top one I have for my garage because I just closed it. But you can see how bright that is, even lighting up the wall up here. But very nice headlight. Now if you want to turn all that stuff off, you just pretty much have to hold the middle button or you can turn your headlight off manually by just holding the up button again. So I saw some people talking about this bike saying if you want to release all the speed possible on it, you have to hold the left brake lever for like 10 to 20 seconds or something like that as you're turning it on. I don't think I have to do that because I lifted the bike up already and it says it's doing 39 miles an hour with no load on it, no weight. So uh, I'll show you that really quick. So I don't think we have to do that setting, but just in case you're not getting the speed out of your bike, that is one little hack you can do. So as you turn the bike on, you hold this brake lever and push it on and just hold this for 20 seconds, turn the bike off, turn it back on, and then you should have the speed unlocked. I'm gonna show you mine at pedal assist number five and I'm gonna show you what my speed will get. And this is miles per hour, by the way. So 39.6. 
So with that being said, I think this bike, when we get it on the road here in a little bit, I believe it should do like 32 miles an hour, or if not 30, roughly. Every time I'm doing my videos, some type of gardener in some area, it doesn't matter if it's this house, that house, that house, they're always doing this while I'm trying to do my videos. Okay, so underneath the bike, no one really shows it, but this is where your controller is gonna be. And this is basically all your wires are tucked under here. They're zip tied underneath here. I've seen some of the older bikes have sleeve cables right here. Like it looks like little, I don't know, little covers right here on both sides. This one doesn't have it. And then you're gonna have most of your wires tucked in here. No one's ever gonna see this, but you're definitely gonna see this because you're gonna be riding the bike all the time and looking at it real close up. Um, you do have some cables bunched up right here. But overall, pretty clean with cable management. Like I said, you're not gonna see that too much. So I think they did a pretty good job on that. So online, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about these batteries coming off. I've seen a lot of people put straps or double strap them. It's not a bad idea if you're gonna go off roading and stuff like that. You shouldn't have to, this battery should not fall off. But the reason I'm kind of bringing this up in this video is that, so let me take this battery off. So that's pretty much how you take the battery off. You wanna go and charge it in your house. The charging port is on this side right here, this little white plug, and then you can turn the battery on and off with a switch right here. But to put the battery on, you basically just put it on the top. It's kind of like a Super 73 or some other e-bikes out there. There we go, it took me a second to find it. And when you push it down, you would think that it automatically locks. It does not automatically lock. Um, it will literally just come right back up. So after you get it in place, make sure it's pushed down firmly. Uh, get your key because it doesn't automatically lock and you have to turn it to the locking position and then your battery will not come off. And then again, right here, you do have a battery indicator also if you do have this battery off the bike inside so you can see where the charge is at on here. But that's something to keep in mind if you buy this bike, lock it after you put the battery on. Other than that, what can I really say about this bike before we jump on and actually go do the riding test? Other than I've noticed that these grips are kind of cheap. We'll kind of talk about them as we ride. You have a little bell right here, so it's not an actual horn. Some people have been changing those out because depending on where you live, you need to let people know you're on the road or if they cut you off or whatever, just for safety. But it is nice they have some type of bell. Most bikes don't. Um, I was very disappointed to see that full suspension in the front, but these aren't adjustable. So you can't turn these. They look like you would be able to turn them, but you can't. And I will say putting this bracket on, for this headlight was a pain in the ass. Um, there's no instruction on how to put this on. They just show a picture of the bracket on the bike. So I had a hell of a time trying to get that work because there's so many little parts to it, but your mileage might vary depending on how you install yours. All right, so the next best thing to do is turn it on and we need to get going. Okay, right away, we're gonna see what top speed I can get. I'm in Assist number five, we got a full battery charge. I like to do it right when the battery is 100% because that's gonna give our best top speed we can get out of it. I'm not pedaling at all either. I wanna let you guys know that. And we're hitting about 29 miles per hour. I definitely can see 30 coming up. It's taking a little bit though. But there we go, there's 30. Still climbing a little bit. Let's see if I pedal, see if pedaling does anything. Okay, yeah, pedaling does nothing. We're still hitting the max speed. So I saw 30, all right, so not bad. I know you guys have seen tons of reviews on this bike saying it does 35 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour. And I'm here to tell you that the latest model of this bike looks like it's doing 30 miles per hour on a full charge, which means at about 70% to 50% of battery, this thing's only probably gonna do about 27 to 28 miles an hour if that it might actually go a little bit slower than that all right so one of the first things i noticed when sitting on this bike is that i feel like i'm bigger than the bike if that makes sense a lot of people are saying that the handlebars felt right i feel like i'm more leaned forward um it's not up here if i if the handlebars are right here i'd be sitting straight up and it feel more comfortable to me but i feel like i'm leaning way far over on the bike and to me, that's because the seat is very high. If you notice, if I can get a good look at this with my camera on the ultra wide, you see how high this seat is compared to the handlebars? It's not that much difference. Most bikes, the seats like down here and the handlebars are like up here. So I feel like I kind of dwarf the bike and I'm about 5'10". 
They do say this bike is made for people that are about like 5'5 five, five to 6'4. So I do fit kind of right in the middle of the spectrum of it. I just feel like I'm a little tiny bit too big for it, but it's not uncomfortable whatsoever. It just feels like I'm riding more lean forward, that's all. A shorter seat would be a lot better for me, but this seat is very comfortable, I will give them that. Let's see how well this bike turns going in and out of stuff. That doesn't feel that bad. It actually turns pretty damn good. Yeah, that's a pretty nice bike to uh, maneuver. No complaints. It's probably because these BMX handlebars that they put on here. I love the style and I love how they feel. All right, so let's get on to the braking. Now, I talked about it already a little bit, but I don't understand why the company did one hydraulic brake and one mechanical brake. I don't understand. In the hands, it feels weird, but as I started riding for a couple miles and got used to it, I will say that it doesn't feel bad on the road whatsoever. It's just an odd choice of why they did that. But you're not gonna have any problems stopping whatsoever. The hydraulic brake that they have on here is more than enough. It's actually very good. It works very well. Now I should start doing the pedaling. So I'm gonna let off the throttle and we're gonna start pedaling. Is pedal assist on? Oh man, okay, so there is a huge delay when you start pedaling felt like it took two or three seconds for the motor to actually kick on to the pedals so that's something you need to think about it's not going to be instant you might have to uh, resort to the throttle if you really need to start moving right away okay so let's try to do a speed test let's go off this little crack in the road so many around here in california i swear um all right so one two three go I'm gonna pedal just in case to see. So we're at 15 miles per hour, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. All right, we're gonna run out of road here. So this motor, even though it's 1200 watts, I feel like the controller is limiting this bike. Something's limiting the bike because I'm not that heavy a person. I'm about 160 pounds and my Super 73 RX stock will move faster than this. But where this bike comes into play is I feel like it wants to keep going faster, but it kind of just, I don't know, it feels like it kind of runs out of power. And I really think it has to do with the controller on this bike. I don't exactly know what the controller is. I know we talked about it underneath and there is no model number it's like a frame that holds the controller in there so it's not the actual controller itself it's sitting in a little little cubby in there so i don't know what's in there but i feel like if this controller was changed this bike would be so much faster if you ask me i feel like this bike is more like a thousand watt peak instead of the 1200 watt even though the motor does say it um, it just feels like a thousand watt motor not a 1200 watt motor so we got this little thing to go up let's see how it does I'm in uh, pedal assist five, obviously, so it should do it, but I'm gonna start slow and then full throttle. That's full throttle going up that hill. I've had bikes that have had 250 watt mid-drive motors that went up that better than this thing. So it was definitely struggling. That's why I say, I think it's a controller issue and not a motor issue, but it is what it is. This bike should do pretty good off-roading because I have the tires at like probably 20 psi i actually didn't air them up before i left i meant to but i didn't but since we don't have adjustable suspension in the front where you can change it from hard to soft depending on your weight and your type of riding we definitely have to check out this test and so far it's not terrible it feels really comfortable on the lighter stuff but when you really hit something like rough it almost feels like the suspension bottoms out. I know it's not bottoming out because I don't feel the whole thing going down, but it feels kind of like a, uh, kind of feels like you hit a stop in there. You can kind of feel it in your hands, like a little jolt on the suspension. So let's try out these brakes. We'll hit both of them at this little pole right here and see how well they work. So get ready, one, two, three, go. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. We stopped at that pole right there. These brakes work. I mean, it's weird that they have different brakes on both sides, but it does a job, I guess. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about the different brakes. I want to let you guys know that even the throttle has a delay too. I didn't actually notice it until now. So let's say I let off. The motor's working real good right now. I let off and then I pull it again. It's maybe almost a full second. I want to say maybe somewhere between half a second and a full second. Now you might not think that's a bad idea, but it really does feel nice when a bike is just instantly responsive as soon as you touch the throttle. Either it'd be a half throttle, full throttle, or a thumb throttle, which um, I don't really think I mentioned, but this is a half throttle and it feels very comfortable. It's not much bigger than the actual grip. It's actually pretty much the same size, so it doesn't feel uncomfortable in your hands at all. I like that. Now the bell, <laughs> the bell is what it is. I mean, there's not really much to talk about the bell. One thing you're gonna probably wanna change on this bike are gonna be the grips. If you wanna ride this for long periods of time, or if you're someone that's really gonna go off-roading with this bike, your hands just kind of free spin on these grips. I mean, there's no rubber to them whatsoever. They're pretty much just, uh, they feel plastic. But keep in mind, if you do buy grips, you're gonna probably have to cut one side of them in half because half of it is a throttle on this side so but it will definitely feel better with different grips on here especially more spongy grips it would give you a little bit more uh better feel off-roading so i was really expecting to not like this bike too much after i unboxed it and i saw the different brakes on here i was like why is there two different brakes i was like oh my god i was like what did i get myself into and as i ride the bike it is not bad not bad at all this seat is fantastic it is very comfortable um it's supposed to be a two-seater so you can obviously see that um there is some room in front of me now if i was the one that had to sit all the way up in the front i'd be very uncomfortable i'll tell you that but i have to sit all the way in the back but i feel like you can have a little kid in the front as long as they're holding on to something or you can have two smaller people uh fit on this bike but two regular adult sized people I don't recommend it. I don't think they're gonna fit. Which brings me to my next point. First off, Frigo. Do not put all this stuff right here. Leave everything in like the owner's manual or the box, the accessory box or something. You do not need to have all these stickers on here. I think it's so tacky. That just gives someone extra work to do. And these aren't the stickers that you pull off and they come off real nice. No, these are the ones that have that crap on the back of them where you're gonna have to clean it off and get all the, the sticker residue off and stuff. So I don't understand why they're here. And if they are here, they should have been black. So it wasn't that big of a distraction because I don't like that. Um, but talking about this little section right here, it's nice that you have this. So you can actually put a bag on here, like a, a rock rose bag on here, and you can fit a good amount of stuff right here because no one's really gonna sit right here. So I think that's very nice. Or you can get a uh, phone holder that straps it up on here if you don't wanna put it on your handlebars. So I like that you do have some extra free space right here. Just don't put these stickers on the bike all right let's head back to the house and wrap up this video all right and that pretty much wraps up the conclusion of this electric bike from frigo um there's no complaints whatsoever on this bike other than the mismatch brakes i don't understand what was up with that um, i feel like they should have just kept the same brakes for both even if they were mechanical brakes they should have been on both sides um, some of their earlier models had hydraulic brakes on both sides so I don't know if maybe because they wanted to keep the price low and everything keeps getting more expensive they wanted to stay at the lower cost range. Um, the throttle perfectly fine no problem it just has a slight delay but most of the pros on this bike is going to be the motor, the fenders, the working brake light, the massive headlight in the front it's very nice and the battery this is a 20 amp hour battery it's very nice and big it's going to get you some decent range depending on your riding style obviously. But some of the cons on it is the mechanical brakes. And I feel like the seat or handlebars need to go up a little bit more from how I am for being 5'10". No adjustable suspension whatsoever. I think that's a downside to some of you guys. Personally, me, I don't care. I never mess with the settings after the first time riding it. But maybe I do dial it in and just leave it once I find the perfect spot. But some of you guys might not like the fact you can't adjust that. And no rear suspension. So that's kind of a downside also. And of course the gardeners are doing some more work again. So hopefully you guys are able to hear me, but <laughs> it seems like every time I bring out my camera, they want to start up something. 
I might have a discount code from the company in the description. So if you guys are thinking about buying something like this, check my description first because you might be able to save $250, which makes this bike even cheaper, like $1250. I don't know if they charge sales tax or shipping or how that works because I didn't fully actually order this bike myself. But if you guys want to pick one up, let me know if you guys do, or maybe there's a bike that you like that's similar to this one that you picked up. Drop a comment. Let me know how you like this video. It's a little bit different from the other videos we have been doing. So appreciate you guys watching and sticking around and be safe out there riding your e-bikes and have a good day. Peace.